Let's start off by first considering how we might convert an acid, carboxylic acid, to one of these acid derivatives. Now, conceptually, we could think about just doing the nucleophilic acyl substitution just like we've talked about. So the idea is that we would access this type of um, tetrahedral intermediate, and then just as we discussed, we would then have uh, a, a breakdown or collapse of that tetrahedral intermediate to just simply substitute um, in this fashion. All right, so again, conceptually, this there's nothing really that wrong with this idea, um, but practically speaking, this turns out to be very difficult and generally doesn't happen. And why is that? Well, it turns out that Okay, so first of all, hydroxide is a poor leaving group. So, poor leaving group, okay, so uh, that's, that's not um, the biggest problem um, because all of this would mean is that you just need um, whatever your nucleophile is to be um, a worse leaving group, right? So, as we talked about, um, uh, in, in other uh, cases with uh, aldides and ketones, you're just exchanging O minus for another O minus. So um, in theory, that's not too, too bad. Um, but it does mean that you would have to come in with a powerful enough nucleophile um, to allow OH minus to be ejected as opposed to just having this thing get, get um, spit back out. Okay, so you need a, a strong enough nucleophile to make that happen. But the problem is that... Um, in general, your your nucleophile, if it's if it's strong enough to do that, is going to be basic. Going to be basic, okay, and that's a huge problem here because the carboxylic acid, of course, is acidic, and that just means that instead of this thing happening, all you're going to do um, with these strong enough nucleophiles is you're just going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid, okay? So you're going to go to O minus and then and then your protonated nucleophile and now your nucleophile is not nucleophilic anymore and this carboxylate is now an anion so it's much more resistant to uh, nucleophilic attack okay so you basically just do an acid base chemistry and, and shut everything down okay so what are we going to do so what we need to do is to convert the carboxylic acid into something that's going to be reactive enough and, and not have that acid base problem um, and so one of the most powerful things to do um, is to actually convert the carboxylic acid into the acid chloride. Remember this reactivity chart that we saw in the last video? We're gonna, basically going to take the carboxylic acid and put it all the way at the top of the reactivity chart. And then we can access any of the other derivatives that we want. So this turns out to be a very powerful thing to do. Acids converted to acid chlorides. Okay. So overall, we are taking carboxylic acid, and the reagent that we're going to use is thionyl chloride. Um, we talked about this uh, reaction when we uh, talked about the conversion of alcohols to alkyl chlorides, um, and this is, is the same uh, reagent, and all we're doing is converting carboxylic acid to a acid chloride, okay? <clears throat> and so, so uh, the byproducts of that, by the way, are HCl and uh, sulfur dioxide gas. Okay, so how does this work? Very briefly, uh, we have a carboxylic acid, and then we've got thionyl chloride, which looks like this, okay? And now, uh, conceptually, this is actually just kind of like a carbonyl. Um, so what's actually gonna happen here is what um, amounts to basically a nucleophilic acyl substitution on the thionyl chloride. So this oxygen, is going to nucleophilically add, okay? All right, and now see you got this uh, oxygen anion, so we're gonna have that dump back down and spit out a chloride. All right, so just like a nucleophilic acyl substitution And we have to take care of a, of a proton there. So let us now just do our deprotonation. OK, 
Okay, and now we've converted uh, the uh, carboxylic acid into this intermediate, which is extremely reactive. So this is called a chlorosulfite. Okay, it's kind of like an anhydride, an acid anhydride, um, but just with a, a different piece over here. But this piece is very, very electron withdrawing. So this is an extremely electrophilic um, species. And what can happen here is that uh, chloride, another uh, bit of chloride, can come in and now do a nucleophilic acyl substitution um, at the carbonyl. Okay, so this would give this tetrahedral intermediate And now uh, we, we get sort of the, the, the major driving force, the irreversible thing that's going to give us our final product and, and make, make sure that this never comes back. So we're gonna collapse out this tetrahedral intermediate and we're going to eject this as the leaving group. Um, but what happens is in, instead of just ejecting this directly, um, this can actually collapse and spit out the chloride. So it's sort of like a, a domino effect where you, you eject the oxygen and then the oxygen ejects the chloride. And then if you just, if you just you know, follow the arrows of what we just did, we have generated our acid chloride, but in doing so, we've also generated a molecule of gas, SO2, and we've generated a chloride anion. So two very stable things, and one of these leaves is a gas. So this is just a gigantic driving force um, that basically takes care of our water molecule um, that, that we had to formally lose there. Uh, and and creates our acid chloride, right? So that's the mechanism of the, of the acid chloride formation. And once you're at the acid chloride, this is very, very useful because now you can take this, remember, and we can go downhill to any of the other intermediates. Okay, so uh, once we're at that point, um, we, can, we can do a lot of these other things. So let's actually talk a little bit about how we might now do uh, acids to uh, the anhydrides. Okay, so there's uh, kind of two different classes here. So the first is, is a cyclic um, anhydride. Uh, and generally, uh, almost exclusively, these are going to be five or six membered. Um, it's, it's very rare to see an anhydride that's, um, that's not of this ring size. And the reason is because they're so reactive anyway, that if you start to put in ring strain, they just won't be stable to formation. Um, but there are a couple that are important, and one very common one uh, is, is from this uh, acid. So this is just a dicarboxylic acid. This is succinic acid. Okay. And uh, one way you can actually create an anhydride um, is to really just heat this up like crazy. So 200 degrees. Uh, this will actually cause it to spontaneously lose water. Okay. And this will actually form the cyclic anhydride. So you actually just boil away the water. So this is this is succinic anhydride. Okay. Now that's not going to be a general um, a general way to make anhydrides, just because of the harsh conditions. But um, industrial, this is probably how this is made. Um, another thing we can do, though, and this is going to be much more appropriate for uh, laboratory scale is to use one of these reagents, um, either POCl3 um, or, or certainly thionyl chloride will work just fine. Uh, and basically all we're going to do here um, is to uh, convert one of the acid chlorides, uh, sorry, one of the acids into an acid chloride. And now once you're at this point, remember this is super electrophilic, so now this can basically just close down um, on, onto that um, intermediate. And I won't go through the entire arrow pushing, but um, at the end of the day, you're now going to be able to um, acylate, do an, sort of an internal acylation of that oxygen, and you'll lose HCl in this process. Okay, so <clears throat> any either of these reagents, you convert one of the ex, uh, carboxylic acids to an acid chloride, and then the rest takes care of itself. Okay, so that's cyclic. Those are those are pretty straightforward to to dehydrate. If we want to make an acyclic anhydride. Um, what we're going to do in this case is uh, we're going to take a carboxylic acid of choice and then we're going to take another piece that we've already converted into an acid chloride or that you know you can buy some of these acid chlorides. 
So you're going to take these two and then you're going to uh, treat this with a base um, such as triethylamine and that will actually allow you to uh, basically do, do the nucleophilic acyl substitution um, with the, the carboxylate. So the way that this works is that you are going to treat the carboxylic acid with the base triethylamine oftentimes and that will give you the carboxylate with the, the triethylammonium salt. Okay, so that's the counter ion. Right? So we just generated now a nucleophile a car carboxylate anion and then once we treat that with the acid chloride, this can just do our nucleophilic uh, acyl substitution. Again, I'm gonna just gonna I'm just gonna do this all in one step um, without drawing the um, tetrahedral intermediate. But you could you should feel free to to uh, practice the full mechanism. Um, anyway, that's that's how we get to that to that step. It's just a carboxylate that's doing the nucleophilic acyl substitution. So you can see here that um, using this technique, we can make an anhydride that is combined of two different carboxylic acids. Okay, so two different species. Or they could be the same or they could be different. Um, and if they're different, this is called a mixed anhydride. Mixed anhydride. Okay. All right. So that's a way to make uh, acid anhydrides. Um, we can also now do acids to esters. Acids to esters. Now this is a very important process um, because esters are very, very, very useful. Um, and so there's a couple of ways that we can actually achieve this transformation. So the, the first one um, is just going to rely on what we've just been talking about. We're gonna first convert to the acid chloride. So we'll do thymyl chloride, that'll convert to the acid chloride. And then all we have to do in the next step is to just treat with whatever alcohol we want. Okay, so this could, uh, this will usually involve an amine base like triethylamine just to take care of the HCl that's generated but it also doesn't have to. If your molecule is stable to HCl you can actually just do this directly and, and they will react um, and so this is going to then give the the OR plus HCl okay and the way that this works this is all just very straightforward um, it follows the general um, kind of paradigm that we've been talking about. So we're going to have a nucleophilic attack at the acid carbonyl. Okay, so this will give us this intermediate. Okay, and we're going to then immediately collapse out, inject the chloride. And then we'll want to just take care of the proton, um, and that will that will get us to to our ester. Okay, so just um, you know, there's really nothing to this uh, for nucleophilic acyl substitution. You add in, and then you eject out. Okay, and then you can see that there's some proton accounting that we have to do in some cases. Okay, uh, so that's one way we can do the the acid uh, the acid chlorides. Um, there is another. Um, very useful way that we can do um, esterification, um, which is called the, the Fischer esterification, um, and we'll go to a new video to talk about that reaction.